Hi, I'm Dr. Greg Castello, Board Certified Family Practice, and today we're going to talk about depression and anxiety and obsessive compulsive disorder and anorexia and bulimia and post-traumatic stress disorder and insomnia. And you might ask, how the heck am I going to do all that in four or five minutes? Well, I'm actually going to talk about the cause of all of these problems, and although they're very different problems, they're actually all related to something called serotonin deficiency. So your brain has three neurotransmitters or three chemicals it uses to communicate from cell to cell. So when a cell wants to send an electrical impulse or message to another cell next to it, it releases a neurotransmitter into the little space in between the two cells called a synapse and it goes from one cell and then it to, goes to the other cell and it stimulates that cell to do something and then that goes on to the next cell. So these are called neurotransmitters. There's three important neurotransmitters. Serotonin is the most important. There's norepinephrine and dopamine are the other two important neurotransmitters. So when you have a serotonin deficiency in your brain, this neurotransmitter is not either present in sufficient quantities or it gets absorbed quicker than it should and you don't have enough of this chemical for your cells to communicate from cell to cell and then things kind of fall apart. The interesting thing is is that in different people a low serotonin level will cause different symptoms. So one person will come in with depressive symptoms, another person might come in with anxiety or panic. Uh, many times this is a common combination of depression and anxiety. Uh, you might actually just come in and have trouble sleeping. You can't stay asleep at night. You wake up frequently. That's serotonin related. So there's different clues to serotonin deficiency and they are very, very different constellation of symptoms. So when you come in, if the doctor puts you on an antidepressant medication, it may not be for depression. It may be for anxiety. It may be for body image issues. It may be because you got mugged and have post-traumatic stress disorder and you have a relative serotonin deficiency. So uh, generically speaking, we call these antidepressants, but we have to understand that they're actually serotonin raising drugs. So your Lexapro, Prozac, Paxil, Zoloft, uh, these medications all raise serotonin levels in your body and fix the underlying problem. If you want to think about it, uh, think about your thyroid. So if you have a low thyroid problem, you may come in with fatigue, you may come in with weight gain, you may come in with constipation or cold intolerance or dry hair or skin or nails. Your doctor does blood work and determines that you're hypothyroid. So if you came in with dry skin, the treatment wouldn't be to put lotion on your skin, it would be to treat the thyroid condition and hopefully your skin gets better. So sometimes we're treating symptoms instead of treating the underlying disease. There's absolutely a stigma of depression, and there really shouldn't be. If you came in and you were hypothyroid, uh, you wouldn't feel inadequate about yourself because that's a chemical abnormality, and you don't really have control over that. If you came in with depression or anxiety, likewise, that's a chemical issue. I don't have a blood test to tell you, to show you on paper that your chemicals are low, but we do know this, so you really shouldn't feel bad if you have to go on one of these medications because it's not necessarily in your control. There's what I call internal depression and external depression. And an example of internal depression is a 40-year-old housewife who's got a 4,000 square foot home and a beautiful family and a wonderful husband and a $40,000 BMW she drives. She couldn't have a nicer life, yet she's sad. She's depressed and a bigger house and a more beautiful child is not gonna make her feel better. She has intrinsic depression, so her serotonin levels are low and she needs to go on medication. That's probably the more common type of depression. Um, the other would be what's called extrinsic depression and that's what I call the dog died phenomenon. So your dog dies, you feel sad, and you get a new dog and you feel better. So some are very obvious and fixable problems like getting a new dog. Some of them may be marital issues or job stress or being unemployed and there's not a real answer to that. So unless you can fix those problems, you may have to go on medications to ameliorate it until you can fix the issue or until you can get a new dog. So internal depression, strictly chemical related, nothing you really did about it and you probably need to be on medications. External related would be something happened to you and sometimes it's fixable and you feel better and sometimes it's not fixable and you don't feel better. If you think about mental illness uh, or feeling well is walking on a path. So patients will ask me how long do I need to stay on medications and it's usually a minimum of three to six months. So 
if you say you feel normal, that's like walking on a path. When you're depressed or anxious or have mental illness, you've strayed off of the path. And sometimes you're just a little bit off of the path and we can talk through it and put you back on the path and you know what normal feels like. Sometimes you've been off the path so far and so long that you don't even know what it feels like to be normal. You don't know what it's like to walk on the path. So the purpose of medications is to put you back on the path, to get you feeling normal again, to let you remember what it is to feel normal, what it's like to walk on the path. We do that for three or six months and you're used to feeling normal and walking on the path and we take you off the medication and see if you can stay on the path yourself. And sometimes you can stay on the path because you know what it's like and you're good. Sometimes you wander off the path just a little bit but you remember what it's like to be on the path and you get back there yourself. And sometimes you go completely back off of the path and need to be put on medication. So sometimes medications can be temporary, sometimes they're permanent. If all your life you've never known what it's like to walk on the path or to feel normal, then you probably need to be on medications for life. So don't be offended if your doctor talks to you about depression. Um, you may have something like insomnia and you don't feel depressed, but it truly is the same chemical, serotonin. The treatment is the same with an antidepressant medication. So um, think of it, depression as being a symptom, not the disease. The, the disease is low serotonin and the depression or the anxiety or the OCD is just a manifestation of it. And you want to treat the problem, not the manifestations. Uh, more to follow, Dr. Greg Castello. Thanks.